happening at the same time um, makes a lot of sense for the individuals. Um, and and um, we really encourage that if, if we have more resources to do it and are able to, to garner more tie with support into programs like this, it really does make a big difference in the new American, um, to new Americans and especially refugee populations. Thanks so much, Zee. Um, and our last speaker will be Dr. Westy Egmont. Westy. Hi, and uh, thanks to the National Immigration Forum for doing this. You guys do a great job in Washington. We need you. So thanks for, thanks for being our voice all across the country and representing us and keeping us well informed. One of the things I appreciate is that when I started doing the Immigrant Integration Lab, it was about uh, four years ago, it was formalized. I realized at the time we had nobody in the country that was creating an academic center around immigrant integration. It's a term I'd been using for about 10 years before that, but it was not in the public parlance. And uh, slowly it has emerged. And in fact, um, my delight was to see the president, a President uh, Obama, on November 20th of 2015, uh, do a very positive statement uh, with an agenda for new Americans that was an immigrant integration focused piece of work. Built a lot on the model of what we had done in Massachusetts uh, in the years before that, where we had worked very positively with our governors to take a look at this issue in multiple ways and create a number of recommendations which were followed under our prior governor. So I believe there's a lot that we can do and should be doing. And uh, the lab is a place where we study this issue and uh, are trying to affect it. Look at the next picture slide. Uh, one of the things I wrestle with a lot is, um, next slide please. One of the things I wrestle with a lot is that uh, we don't have a lot of knowledge about uh, who's taking care of newcomers. We are remarkably in the dark, although as a country we have probably the best history in the world of being a receiving nation. We've done a lot of this with kind of a laissez-faire attitude and some of the old gateway cities have uh, some strong institutions, but now with 22 other states impacted, there's been a remarkable absence of attention to their needs. And it's wonderful to listen to the story from Salt Lake and to hear how many good things are happening. Uh, Seattle's another great strong city. But you know we are all struggling to sort of catch up and keep up with a changing flow of newcomers to our country. And we have to do some really hard work. So we identified that there were three professions that are at the front door, welcoming people and, and perhaps the first points of contact. Uh, Obviously, that's over and above uh, the workplace. But those three professions are the clergy, educators, and social workers. And I was fortunate to have an assignment here at uh, Boston College, an old Jesuit school, uh, at the School of Social Work. And I've taken it on uh, at the international, at the uh, national level, to really try to think about how do we mobilize 650,000 social workers to be at the front end of the work of immigrant integration. If this army were really released in its full power and potential, it could virtually touch all the major institutions of our society where immigrants come seeking other kinds of help and assistance. So we've been working at that very aggressively in a variety of ways. Um, I'll tell you a couple of stories that I think are telling. I went to the National uh, Social Worker Conference for School Social Workers, 50 workshops, uh, six plenary sessions, a few thousand people present. Not one single speaker was addressing the issue of the foreign-born, newcomers, immigrants. Now, one out of four kids lives in an immigrant household. One out of five children in America's public schools is an immigrant, and there was not one reference to what was going on in the schools because of the cultural reality that was coming in the door through this incredible variety of, of uh, diverse populations that were increasingly uh, in every kind of community, not just uh, old inner city communities. Well, that struck me as just outrageous that we should be really getting at least the school social workers to be engaged and to be uh, looking for new ways to, to change the school culture, to provide some awareness and inclusion, some efforts at the things that surround education. Uh, sometimes they're called soft services, but we know that the difference between graduating and not graduating is very often the soft services that are necessary, whether families link into family literacy, whether parents are helped to become engaged with the school system when they aren't familiar with that kind of social engagement, 
uh, when they overcome their own hesitancy of dealing with authorities or the government if they have questions of their own status. So uh, we've taken that on pretty seriously, and I think we're seeing the industry really beginning to talk about this. And the good news is that, that there's a lot that we can do. Uh, I'll come back in a second only to say that the faith community obviously needs to be equally mobilized. We say the most segregated hour in America is Sunday morning. Uh, one of the phenomena is how much the faith community, however, has been also in the leadership. Catholic Charities alone resettles 50% of all the refugees in the U.S. refugee program. Lutheran Social Services is the second largest provider. The faith community is front and center in the U.S. refugee program, and it's really been incredibly important in terms of social inclusion when people settle in any community. They find a faith community. I was asked the other day to speak to a Ugandan church in a little suburb of Boston, and I went out there expecting a storefront church, and a big handful of people, and I was absolutely amazed to find 600 people worshiping. Um, this was an invisible population to us. It wasn't showing up on my census data, but they had found each other from all over New England and came together on Sunday mornings. The faith community is vital, and supporting them and engaging them and helping them to see and know their own potential role in terms of immigrant integration, as well as in terms of ethnic bonding, is incredibly important. Social service agencies are not as progressive as one might think. I have about 100 papers in my uh, file at this point, and one of the things that I experience is that there is um, very often a kind of a, a straightforward mission and an earnestness about the mission, but very little effort to really think about the changing demographics and to change the way that social service agency works. And it is obvious that the, the why in the middle of a neighborhood uh, sees itself as providing social services, but they all often not have any way in which they have begun to reach the Latino families who are desperate for the daycare center that they're running. And there'll be none of the Latino women in their morning yoga class, and therefore they, they don't have the human connection to the, to the things that are doing. Uh, we see the same thing in PTOs. We, but social service agencies, uh, really have to be challenged. So getting internal advocates, and I suspect I'm talking to the choir today, but because if we're taking time to be here and to listen to this and participate, we're already thinking about this issue. But the challenge becomes, how do we participate um, in changing the social service agencies in which we work and serve so that our services are genuinely inclusive and the barriers between the foreign-born and the old population disappear and people are recognized that they are welcome and included in the agency's plans and provisions. Now, there are a lot of concerns in doing this kind of work. One is that um, the research is tiny. You know, I feel like the, the sea is huge and my boat is small. Um, you know there are only three PhDs who graduated in the whole of the United States who are Latinos in social work last year. So across the country we have too few folks who represent the largest immigrant populations uh, graduating and becoming leaders in education. We need to fill that pipeline with, with new leadership. I've been very pleased here at uh, Boston College School of Social Work. We set up the first Spanish language MSW program in the country just a few years ago. Our school is now 20% Latinos. And talk about skills development. We are reaching a generation of wonderful Latino leaders who are developing themselves to lead social service agencies as well as work at them. And we're teaching social service agencies not to use our foreign language abled immigrants as translators only, but predominantly as middle management and bring them on up to take over the agency. Uh, it's really working at substantial systems change that is at the heart of our work. I find us reaching out in the community to do some other things that excite me, um, things like working with uh, the African Bridge Network. We realized there, were, there was no Pan-African movement in the Northeast, so we've created, helped to create a network where Africans, who are mostly the educated Africans, are finding each other, supporting each other. And we find opportunities to send out Know Your Rights to our 600 partner agencies in the community to facilitate learning with uh, the type of programs that are uh, represented in this slide. Um, I teach on the border and take social workers down there to discover what the systems are. Also do another course like that in Europe, looking at the way Europe's struggling. Uh, and I've worked from the beginning with the NIC, the National Immigrant Integration Conference, 
and this is a place where we can all come together who care about this, to learn from each other, support each other, build on each other's strengths, and develop a, a national agenda that I think will help to carry us forward. There's a lot more to say, but um, I think that you get a sense that the agendas are great, and educational institutions, community colleges, uh, elite private colleges, all schools uh, have a, a particularly important role to play in immigrant integration. Thanks. There's a couple more slides in there. Thanks so much, Wesley, and really thank you to all of our presenters today. Um, as a reminder, we, we're going to be starting the Q&A portion now. Um, and if you would like to ask a question, please feel free to type your question into the control panel on the right. Um, so one question that we received is whether we will be presenting the PowerPoint presentations. And um, yes, today's webinar is being recorded, and we will be sending the PowerPoint presentations available.